Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teachers Noob. Today I have with me Liana. Hello, and Scout is here too. Aw, uh, hey Scout. <laughs> cat. We have cat difficulty. Cat! <laughs> All right, there we go. Added value cat, right, Scouty? Yeah. Yep. And today we're going over a interesting comic called Fanboy, which was done by Mark Evanier and Sergio Aragone. That's how you say his name, right? I think Aragone. Yeah. Yeah. With Aragone. a whole bunch of other creators throughout this series, and it's done as a lovely letter to fans. Yeah, I mean, Sergio's a really nice guy, so. Yeah, but, and Mark, oh, I've met him. In fact, um, mm -hmm. hold on. Well, you got that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you got a sign. And he's a little drawing on it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy. He's a really nice yep. guy. Yeah. And um, and Mark Evanier, you know, he's done so much stuff, and he's been yeah, fan, yeah, yeah. Uh, friends with so many creators over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, Kirby, cool. especially. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, so, we're going to jump in? Yep, let's just dive right in, shall we? As we're introduced to a guy named Finster. Welcome to my comic book. This is where I live. And hey, isn't a nicely printed comic? Uh, uh, isn't it a nicely printed comic book? Good paper stock, nice dark mm. ink. You know, I've always wanted to have my own comic book. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, in my comic book, I could be anything I want to be. I could be a space warrior battling the cosmic scallops from the planet Bleen. Quick, fetch the nuclear tartar sauce. I could be a superhero <laughs> fighting other superheroes from other worlds, sometimes even from other companies. I could be a ninja assassin. I'm not sure what they do, but boy, do they look neat. Or I can be me. Yeah, I'm, I know, kind of boring, right? A comic book's a great place to live if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. Or even if. <sighs> did you know, I mean, did you ever have the feeling that the real world is VHS and you're oh, beta? Reference. <laughs> what is it? 1989? Is that when this is from? 1999. 1999. All right. Cool. I was like, VHS beta reference. Wow. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, 99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can Not I that I it? have an exciting real life. See that girl coming this way? That's Kimberly. And she's absolutely not for me. Watch. Yeah. Finster. It's now notice now we have a different artist. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, let me load it and let me look it up. Um, which artist this is for? Because I do mention at the end of the issue, but I rather Deliber mention it as we go along. Yeah, deliberately this anachronistic art. That's cool. Ma may I? This is Matt Haley. This is Matt Haley artwork. Uh, I love the start on the twelve panel format. I think that yep. is a lost art. I love the classic twelve panel format. I would love to see that come back. Mm hmm. But like I say, that's Matt Haley artwork for this mm -hmm. and the next page. Mm hmm. And yep, obviously, this is his fantasy getting the yeah, better of him. Ob obviously. Mm hmm. Right? And now there's none. Okay. Yep, because he feels like, if I can't have you, I'll go live in a com convent. I'm sorry, that never happened. I can't lie to you people. That was just my overactive imagination. Well, at least he's honest. Mm hmm. Here's what really happened. Hi, Kimberly. Hello, it's me, Finster. Remember me? Unfortunately, yes. I was uh, just wondering if you would, like, maybe please go out with me sometime, would ya? The following is a list of people I would go out with before I would go out with you. Kevin Costner, Leo DiCaprio, George Clooney, all the guys on Melrose Place, David Duchovny, most of Aerosmith, Charlie <laughs> Sheen, <laughs> Eddie Baldwin <laughs> brother, Sean Connery, Sean Penn, Penn, T and Penn Teller, Ben Stein, Dennis Rodman, Dennis Miller, Dennis Franz, Nick Cage... Nick Meglin, Don Hatch, Ronald McDonald, Richard Simmons, Drew Carey, Drew Barrymore, the artist formerly known as Print, Paul Reiser, Paul Schaefer, Paul Dini, the Three Stooges. Wait a minute. The Three Stooges are all dead. He didn't flag Richard Simmons, though. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Notice that, notice that. They're all dead. <laughs> the Three Stooges, so Rod Perot, anybody named Al, anybody with a D in their name, and the Seattle Marins, you made your point. <laughs> but then we see an old, a friend of his, um, Sandy, who actually does like him. Hey, okay. I sent this, you this invitation to our beach party tonight. I had the right, I had the right house, but it came back marked no such person at this address, which we'll think on my father's part. Thanks, but I think I don't think it can make it. See ya, running off again. I don't get it. He always acts like I'm King Kong and he's a large banana. <laughs> What is he so afraid of? 
Or, oh no, I'm not afraid of Sandra if you think that. You're going to be more wrong. No, I just remember that I'm late for work. Mr. Grudge docks my pay. If I'm late for work, Mr. Grudge docks my pay. So yeah, of course, it's a comic book store, of course. Mm. Oh, but then now we have um, Barry Wrightson on artwork. Cool. Comic that's book that's zombies. Cool ah! That's a really cool page. Mm-hmm. Must have Legion. Must have X Men. No, no, leave. <laughs> yes, they are. They were allowed to reference Marvel during this. That's good. No, no, leave me alone. The new issues aren't in yet. Please spare me. I would have. I live for comic books. I spend every cent I make on them. I don't base. Price of nerd in mint condition. <laughs> well, this is right. pressing. What? This was prescient of things to come. Yep. I'm sorry. I'm doing it again. That's not what really happened. And Mr. Grudge doesn't really look like that. <laughs> but um, here, I'll show you what he really looks like. Didn't I, didn't I hear? Didn't you hear what I said? Go unpack, unpack the new comics. Not much of an improvement, is it? <laughs> yeah, you're going to see this guy is always going to be eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and according to Mark Evanier, a lot of comic book um, short store owners did not like how they uh, this kind of portrayed them. Because it's somewhat true. Not yeah. always. I, I, I know. I, especially I during, especially by the late 90s. I know some very athletic comic book store owners who were uh, around in, in the 90s. But uh, yeah, eh, there were people who look like this. There still are people who look like this. Yep. I know. Uh oh, trouble. Hey, you. We don't allow reading in this store. What did you say? I said, read all you like. Didn't you hear me? If you like, I'll turn the pages for you. <laughs> I don't know why I hired that idiot. Oh, it's babbling on. Please, sir. Can I be paid sometime? I hate that. He probably botched things up while I was out. <sighs> yep, just as I figured. Finster, get down from there and stop clowning around. Sorry, Mr. Grudge. And it's upside down. Mm -hmm. Um. Skip in the background and put away all the new comments about whining, psychotic, all-powerful heroes. But that's like most of them. <laughs> yes, sir, right away. But first, I'm going to try and get a few more panels done on my new comic. Drawing always calms me down. Now, you guys, buy something or get out. We we would, but you don't have what we want. What do you want? Stuff that's free. <laughs> hey, trash is free. Stuff that's free. Stuff <laughs> Gee, they free. found out about the beach party. Uh-oh. Mm -mm. But then, while he's doing this, you know, when I was younger, I used to wonder what the essential difference was between men and women. But since I had teenage, the difference has become more obvious. The men all want to kill me, and the women all want me to drop and drop dead on my own. You <laughs> could stand up to them, you know. Beg pardon? Those bullies. You could stand up to them. You could stand up to Hank, too. Oh, sure. You can say that because you're Clark Kent. We're all Clark Kent. Some folks just ha and just haven't figured out which phone booth to change in. Mm. Here, try this. You have no idea how good it'll make you feel. Okay, stand back. Mm. Well, these work. The comments called authority. Yeah. Probably though, did not show off his shirt, his yo, know, his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to show you what this is all about. Yo, couldn't we start with something on the ground, like the X-ray vision trick? I'd settle for that. Or maybe super breasts when my soup's hot. Uh, we're, uh, we're, lighting, uh, we're lighting on a mountaintop from West Valley. How do you know? I, I, I always read the captions. Shortly they alight. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the effort, Superman. I've all, and I should point out, this is Jerry, uh, Con, uh, Jerry Ordway on artwork mm -hmm. for Superman. But all of a sudden, Superman disappears, and it's the biker guys there. <laughs> We've taken care of Superman, and now we'll take care of you. You can't kill Superman. Metropolis needs him. DC Comics needs him. He's in about 19 books. Plus, he sometimes makes cameos to kick off a lame new series. <laughs> we didn't kill him. We transport him to a place of utter desolation. A place of total destruction. You sent him to the Marvel office? Oh. We, sent him <laughs> we sent him to an alien world. By the time he returns, if he's returned, we'll, we will have enslaved all mankind. I can't let them do that. Bill Gates thinks that's his job. <laughs> We need a superhero, there are, and there are eight millions of them in comics today. But since there's never one around when you need one, looks like I'm going to have to become one. <laughs> His mind really goes crazy, doesn't it? 
<laughs> that design is excellent. Oh my god, it's so late 90s. But yeah, it still feels classic too. Yeah, but it's so good. <laughs> and use the force, Luke. Oops, sorry, wrong script. Use your brains. Well, if I well, if I could find mine. Wait, it's crazy, but it might just work. You guys can have Earth. If I get any calls, tell them they can find me in Quadrant 7. Ciao. Wait, what's so great about Quadrant 7? You don't know about Quadrant 7? Best place in the whole galaxy. It's for beautiful half-clad supermodels, and they have free cable TV, and all the pizza is free and non-fattening. Hey, sounds neat. Much better than this crummy planet. So they, tra they, they get transported there to... Oops. Oh. Wow. So yeah, he, he, he used his brain and everything. Pineapple and pizza. That would be controversial these days. Actually, a lot of <laughs> controversial these days. I hope they get good reception on HBO. No, jeez. Oh, I know, right? Cable TV. <laughs> That was cool. premium channels. Oh, premium channels. This is cute. And when you're finished with that, polish our life-size statue of Julius Schwartz and fill my pez dispenser with ve veal chops. Are you listening to me? Uh, yes, sir. And uh, yes, I heard you, Mr. Grudge. Those boys aren't still on the front of that store, are they? Nah, they found an invitation in the wastebasket. They went up to wreck some somebody's beach party. Beach party? No, well, not my problem. Not my mm -hmm. fault they found that invite. Gee, we're down to our last 8,000 8, copies of last year Rare Hot Comic. We'll have to get more from the warehouse. Don't look at me. It's, it, 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 it is not my fault. Maybe I'll do a window display of Jerry Lewis comics. The French fans really love that book. I said, don't look at me. Go read some other comics. Here, see that? The end caption. It means the issue is over. Bye. Okay, so issue isn't over. And I'm an idiot of monumental proportions. Sure enough, they're crushing the beach party. Unfortunately, why isn't Hank doing anything? The leader of the and the biker gang decided to go surfing with Hank. So, but then what does he do? He actually goes there and um um looks through the um phone book and the phone book. I wish I had someone who could help me. Someone who could stand up to these thugs and save my beach party. Someone, anyone. I'm here. I knew I should have been more specific. <laughs> so, what did he do? He, at first, they start playing with him like he's a um, volleyball. But then he actually decides to send him to a, what claims to be another party. So basically doing what he did earlier. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Kimberly said, you jerk, you just ruined somebody else's party. What kind of stupid solution was that? But where was the party? It was the police station! Shut up, Bob. Where's my lawyer? Kimberly, listen to me. It isn't what you think. Kimberly doesn't want to talk to you, creep. Okay, I'll be honest. In this case... I don't mind Kimberly for getting upset in this regard. This is, this is, that's more of a believable getting upset. Yeah, this is sort of the twist on the uh, comic book trope, though, right? That you, right. Don't, you don't be a hero for a reward. You be a hero because it's the right thing to do and no one appreciates you. Yeah, it's cute. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, though, her reasons actually make sense. It's not one of those, yeah. oh, she knows what really happened but still upset. No, she really thinks he did what he did when we now know, no, he didn't. You could still never write this comic today. There would be outrage. Well, oh, hey, Finster, can I interest you in a hot dog? Thanks, Sandra, but I'd like to be alone. And it looks like most people prefer me that way. I don't get it. He can be so smart and so funny and so clever. He has imagination and insight. Why, oh, why is he such a lunkhead? And when you look at her, she's not a da any different, ba bad looking than, than Kimberly. Mm -hmm. That actually does come into play later. On. So now we're getting this, and this is one of the oh. last works of Gil Kane. Oh my goodness! Oh yep. my gosh, Dave Gibbons. Dave oh. Gibbons and oh. Wendy Pen Peeny. This is uh, they got some good talent on these. They did, and um, Gil Kane did the cover. Nice. Well, with Sergio. Yeah, I, I love the the mashup art. But yeah, he's on his second issue, and he's dealing with um, um, his teacher, who's all about learn, 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 and oh boy, look what he slipped in. Green Lantern archives. I miss those archives. Yeah, yeah. A nice oh. reminder was, um, yeah, Abin Sur, but uh-oh. Yeah. 
Ahem. Wasting your time reading comic books in class? You should be spending your time studying. But I'm going to be a comic book artist when I grow up. I have to study things like that. Study them when you get home. I would, but I have to work after school. And you give too much homework. Silence! There is no such thing as too much homework. But thank you for reminding me. For tomorrow starts listing all these this homework. All right. That's the, part, and that's the part that really bothers me. It's good for you. Since when is spending in the rest of your life in high school good for you? She makes history so boring. It's such a chore. And hey, did you see something up in the... Oh, for, uh, oh forget it. Probably just my appallingly overactive imagination. Oh, and this is um, where we get... Um, um, this is... Oh, this is Gabe Gibbons' artwork. Okay. Okay. As yeah. we see another, another yeah. Green Lantern, yeah, he's dying, so he sends the ring out to Finster. <laughs> and he get, of course, it's like, oh, forget about that thing in the sky and enjoy a new copy of Elf People. Sorry about Miss Lynch, Finster. I heard she was thrown out of the World Wrestling Federation for unnecessary roughness. Oh, hi, Sandy. Did you see something up in the sky a few minutes ago? He remembers my name. That's a hopeful sign. <laughs> no, again, she definitely has a crush on him. Mm hmm. I mean, it's, it's not that, it's not like he's like a complete, you know, fuggo. Yeah, like, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's typical Sergio artwork, but you could definitely see he's going to be a guy, guy that someone like her could find attractive. Yeah. Say, you see, yeah. Say, you see that new Jim Carrey movie? I'm not sure. Is it the one where he makes the funny favorites and overacts? <laughs> oh, man. Listen, I want to go read my comic book. See you later. But I was wondering if maybe we can go see... What does it take to get through this guy? A scud missile? <laughs> Hello, where did you come from? And, and then he looks over as he then sees um. Oh. Yeah. Whoo. Oh gosh. Yeah, but this is a woman drawing this. Yeah, that's that's pretty. That's a really good page. But again, a nice reminder: that women can draw sexy ladies too. Yeah, that's um. People always got, it feels like these days you always got to remind some of the people who complain about that type of artwork. There are women who love to draw it like this. Amanda Kahn is one of those who yeah. always says it. Yeah, yeah. Well, even uh, back in the days, people like Ramona Frayden. Oh, yeah, exactly. I met her. Yeah, she's a nice lady, isn't she? She is. And she signed my copy of Just Imagine Stan Lee Volume 3 because she did a backup story in it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, she got a wicked sense of humor, too. Yep. But yeah, so. Me, uh, all the stuff with him and um, Hank, and his ring does something, but it's like, where's Finster? I'll kill him! He was nowhere near you, Hank. He couldn't have done it. Uh-oh. The ring is somehow causing the food to come to life. It shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> but then he soon realizes it's a power ring, so he becomes a Green Lantern. Nice. <laughs> Typical Sergio, and I gotta say, I like this. He's not. This is. A, I am doing a straight story for the most part, but not a um um a full parody. Yeah, I mean, it, it's his. It's definitely his style of humor, and he had this ability. I mean, he definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely inspiration from Mad Magazine at the time. God, I don't know if anybody remembers Mad Magazine, but mm, I, I, duh duh. What yeah. me worry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, did he? I think he did some stuff for Mad Magazine. Oh, uh, he always did. Yeah, always. Yeah, that's right. He yeah. always did the artwork for Mad Magazine. That's right, and, and so yeah, I mean, this is. But he's a, he's a fast artist. It, he's a ridiculously fast artist. But yeah, anyway, the teachers are like, too much homework. What an inane concept. How can there possibly be too much in, uh, in homework? It's good for them. Don't they understand it? I'm preparing them for college. So it may take some of them a few extra years to graduate from high school. Hmm. I'm tired. So she then, um, I should have stayed up all night flunking students. Maybe a little nap. But I was on then. It is now. This ends up being a dream. <laughs> but now this is Gil Kane. He does the artwork over Sergio stuff. That is cool. Yeah, I have power. I can conquer nations. I can conquer the world. I can have every world leader, every king, every president, every po and potentate, and I can make them all do book reports. <laughs> For years, my students have mocked me, disobeyed me. Now I have the power, and I intend to use it. Oh my god, that's so cute. Yep, so she then starts to cram you know, <laughs> information into her head. Louisiana Purchase, Merrimack, Stamp Act, Monitor, Calvin Coolidge, 
Continental Congress, Andrew Johnson. I'll be back. I'm going to check the monitor and see how much my pupils are learning. Then we see Hal show up. You're just like you've been drawn by Gil Kane. I'm, I, I better get you out of here. You can help me teach the teacher a lesson. So they used it and they do the oath. Stop her, force her into it. And she realized, no, it's too draw, too dry. This, this is an education. It's just cramming people's heads full of dates and names. And, and, and. No, she's like, like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go do some. And I'm like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not home studying, but don't bother. I'm cutting back on the homework to a more human level. And tomorrow, I'm about to, I want to talk to the class about changing our approach to the course of study. <laughs> that was <laughs> so cute. <laughs> but yeah, so happy ending. Uh, and an entire story told in a single book. Yep. So yeah, but then whoop, one of the oh, um ah! the guardians take the ring back. Hey Finster, why are you so glum? Oh, I thought I had a chance to save mankind. Save mankind. What are we gonna do? Get Barney the dinosaur cancelled? That's real funny. Interesting. If someone like her cares so much about him, perhaps he could be worthy someday. Mm. <laughs> That's really cute. And again, told a complete story. Yep. A, okay, they had more pages. Back yep. Oh, then. Kevin McGuire cover. Oh. No, uh, here we're going to have only two creators, Bill Sankiewicz and Brent Anderson. Wow. Bill Sankiewicz. Yep. He only does two pages and Brent Anderson does the rest. Oh, okay. Oh, it's you. I'm sorry. Didn't realize we started. I'm st I am still Finster. There's not much room for promotion in this job. And this is still my comic book. Comic books are the most important thing of my life. So right then we see, like, and I, and I say to you, can we, as decent Americans, afford to turn our backs on such an oblivious, indisputable cause of moral de and decline, my friend? No respectable parent would deny that comic books contribute to the breakup of the American family. Oh, Lord. That's such an oregano page right there. Yep. Our Recently, knowledge. in the once proud and noble city of Rome, Italy, archaeologists unearthed remains of what appeared to be primitive prehistoric comic book. What? <laughs> We're coming to you live from outside Grudge Comic Book Shop where community activist Jeremiah Creed is spearheading a protest. This protest began only moments ago about the time of our camera when our cameras arrived. <laughs> and it's intended to pr pressure the city council into banning the sale of so-called comic books. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how can we as a society survive if we allow comic books to corrupt our children and impair their growth and mental development? Hey, I resent that. In fact, I know I resent it. I'll go even far as to deny it. I read comic books all my life, and look how I turned out. My God, it's worse than I thought! <laughs> Whoops! Unfortunately, like another cheap politician looking for a safe issue to make himself look righteous. All these protesters, it's time like this, I wish there were one of those violent savage Avenger books. And there's um Bill Sankowitz artwork. Wow. Yep. And then he's dealing with this guy who's always stealing um uh, his name's Weasel. He's always stealing comic books. Boy, I wish I was one of those take no prisoner heroes. What I do that punk. Oh, again, Sankowitz again. There was Alfred E. Newman in that panel. Hmm. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Here? Or no, here. No, yep. No, no. What? See, me worried? Yeah, yeah. See him yep. in the bottom. The bottom yep, yep. The I see him. I see him. Yeah. Mad Magazine shout out. Yep. Oh. Go on. Anyway, but yeah, so he, he puts up this Wonder Woman thing that actually does come into play in the last issue. Of course, I'll dock your pay, but I'll forgive you. Really? But he soon gets a phone call from this guy who's saying, um, like, I just learned from your store and the news just now. Oh, no. Another person think he has rare old comics. My name is Joseph <laughs> Zensi, and I, uh, we get these all the time. They found some old comics in the attic. I happen to come to, uh, have some comic books that are quite old, and they've seen articles about how much comic books are worth. I've seen articles about how much comics in these comics are wor old comics are worth, and they think they have some treasure. And I was wondering if they're worth anything. Tense what this week. Could I have you hold for a moment? He talked about stuff like they're basically like um, weird fantasy, mad comics, a bunch of EC books. 
Haunt of Fear, Tales from the Crypt, and he seems to hang up saying, those aren't worth much, thanks. Gee, I thought those EC books from the 50s were kind of valuable. I'll take them, I'll buy them, name your price, gimme, gimme, gimme. You can mail me a check for whatever they're worth. I just want to get them out of here. Can I ask you a question? Is it just the monetary value of these books that interests you? Not at all. These are great books, wonderful stories, terrific art. You like the artwork in comic books? Do I? When I was a kid, I started drawing because of comic books. All these great artists. Thanks, mister. I'll send you a check. Very interesting young man. Very interesting indeed. But of course, so he brings them there. Of course, the, again, the boss is all like, I'm going out for a meatball peanut butter sandwich. Put the comics away. Funny thing. Remember that Doctor Who led the anti-comics crusade in the 50s? His name was Zensi. So in other words, this Zensi guy is supposed to be a take on, um, oh, what was yeah. his name? Um, uh, uh, Seduction of the Innocent. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Blank. Oh my God. Blank hold on, hold on. Seduction of the Innocent. Um, Fred Frederick Wurzum. But Wurzum, yeah. now, I don't think Mark Evanier was what he does with him later is trying to say that Wurzum was that bad of a guy. I don't think he's going to go for that. Mm hmm. That's why he's using someone else to replace him. But, of course, Weasel takes the books, and then once he realizes it, well, the Incredible Finster! Incredible Finster. <laughs> and I love it how he's running around, but he's still you still have Sergio <laughs> doing um, Sandra. Yeah. So the Justice League show up. They come in to fight him, and look at Weasel here! He almost looks like Jimmy Olsen, doesn't he? Yeah, well, kind of a mix of Jimmy Olsen and Guy Gardner. Yeah, the bowl cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finster smash Batman. Batman steal comic books. Finster make Batman pay. Finster hurt Batman. <laughs> what the? Why did it? Why so small? Weird. What the heck? Okay, but anyway. So yeah, the league are trying to stop him. But he's getting more angry until Sandra shows up and calms him down. I know you're mad at me, me Weasel, and, and at yourself for not keeping a better eye on him, but you won't accomplish anything in this state. Come back to me, Finster, please. I'm not mad at myself. I'm mad at him. When you get that mad, it's usually both. Please, Finster, calm down. Do it for me. Okay, I'm back. Now, see, again, that tells you what good... And I gotta say, wait. She's saying he remembers my name, and yet there, at this moment, it acts like they've been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That comes off a little... You know? Lack of continuity. Or it could be a case where maybe she's just winging it and, you know, yeah. maybe they're not that, that long-time friends. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, I get the sense you're supposed to believe that they've known each other for a long time and he just checks out and doesn't notice. Yeah. Her. And so yeah. sometimes forgets her name since he became a teenager. It's a Taylor Swift song before Taylor Swift was Taylor Swift. Yep. I love this also. This could take a while, so why don't we use some captions and cut to the next day? <laughs> the next day, he's captured, arrested, the comics books are to blame for this crime? That's right, Your Honor. If they hadn't been published, I couldn't have stolen them. <laughs> so he got the comic books back, but then soon, he's still thinking about Kimberly. Do you have a copy of the new Wonder Woman? Um, I, about the same as the chances of OJ finding the real killers. Oh, jeez. Funny in 99, isn't that so funny that that became relevant years later? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Just... Give them a copy of War Woman Warrior. Got it! And hey, how old are you? 15. Oh boy, that guy, it's his nephew! Oh, jeez. And so, of course, they tricked me. The kid had a fake beard on it. You have the right to remain silent. You did fine, Renfrew. Oh, you helped eliminate a purveyor of filth and obscenity. Can I sneak? Can I keep the comic? Of course he does. Wah, wah. Boy, I hope this is con continue and, and this is a continued story. And ooh, look at this with Joe Kubert on cover. And for this issue, we're gonna have Jordy B um, Barnett, Mary S um, Severin, and Ru and Russ Heath, bunch of old war artists. Yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah, oh yeah, let's look at it. All right, I'll tell you. I saw the comic book. You did what? Tell me you didn't, I didn't hear that. Help, let us out of here! <laughs> <laughs> I hate to, to think what and what they'd have done if I saw the graphic novel. Uh, Maybe if I dropped a bloody glove, huh? Okay, uh, Finster, bail's been posted. Really? 
This is worth getting arrested for. I mean, the stuff. Oh, this guy, he's basically always saying, like, tell a fellow I'll be in court all afternoon. I'm representing a woman who's um, suing her brassiere maker for a non support. Uh, and I'm suing Adam Sandler for stealing Polly Shore's career. Or maybe it's the other way around. Oh. Yeah, this guy's basically suing everyone. Yeah. No, that, 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 that time, like, and she can't sing, she can't dance and dance, and she can't talk. She was arrested for impersonating a Spice Girl. Save this comic book, folks. By the time I get out of here, it'll be a valuable Golden Age issue. So apparently, Kimberly and Sandra are are still fr are friends. Yeah. The thing to and the thing to remember about that, that about guy Sandy is that they're all basically pigs. The, and the one I did before Hank was so bad, Jimmy D put an all-out point bulletin for him. But he still wasn't as bad as that creeper you like, that Finster. I can't believe I think he's Finster's cute. He has that lost little boy look. I keep wanting to put his picture on a milk carton. I may pur I may pur purge unintentionally. You're violating the first rules of a relationship. Never like anybody a lot more than they like you. The world's <laughs> too full of women with bad self images who settle for loser boyfriends. Here, I mean, I'll bet they're discussing it on Oprah right now. And I'm proud. I'm proud to say that the this dangerous and destructive enemy of society is finally behind bars. Maybe they got the guy who invented leg wax. <laughs> and they're going, Fenster? Told you he was a loser. He's a comic book fan, Sandy. Their idea of a stable relationship is when Superman teams up with Batman. Oh, jeez. So yeah, of course he's dealing with trying to deal with all this. He's still allowed to go. What? Self-aware. Mm-hmm. But of course, he's soon realizing, um, you know, whole, wait, Dr. Zensi was the Dr. Zensi, the guy he got the comics from? Mm. Um, and so they talk a bit about it. In this case, it's corruption of the un, uh, untainted. Yeah. Uh, corruption of the untainted. As they grow older, many people keep and treasure certain books that they read when they were young. But throughout my studies, I have never once encountered one individual who saved the comic books they read or who recalled or treasured them in any way. B.S. Mm -hmm. So he does this as a flashback. This is the other artist. Um, this is um, Mary um, Severin. Mm -hmm. Where basically he does a whole, you know, a take on what happened with Wernstrom and all that. And of course the whole thing about what happened with EC and everything mm -hmm. and how they eventually went and did Mad Only. Mm -hmm. The humor magazine was a little thing called Mad. Perhaps you've heard of it. It's funny. Except for those stupid cartoons in the margins, <laughs> which is what Sergio yeah, does. Which is what he does, yeah. Yep. But yeah, so he's thinking about all the artwork, everything. And soon, we then see of him in a war comic. And I love this. The only thing that Sergio's doing is the face. Yeah, that's gorgeous. It is. They're told they want, they want to, their, their library is about look, to be attacked. Look at the cross hatching. That's stunning. Yeah. Holy shit. But this whole mission is, is a school, a bunch of, and the, this is when the Nazis were doing the book burning. Right. Yep. And they've been doing this all the time. And they have one good book you know, shelf with books. Like, well, good luck. We'll try to keep them from coming here. Which leads to, of course, them fight, shooting, fighting, and, um, and basically they're told, like, they're going to go back and burn the library again. So they send, um, they send Finster back to do it. And I'm like, just give them the books when they get here. Your life matters more than some books. Perhaps it does. But it does not matter more than a man's right to be whole. It was Sir Francis Bacon who wrote, Reading maketh a man whole. I will not be a whole if I capitulate. Only to hope that somewhere, so, uh, somewhere uh, someone else will not give in to them. That's nice. Yeah, soon we then skip ahead to the trials. He decides to stand up for his rights. Of course, I'm not familiar with the details of the case, so I'll pass. So, Phil, I'm also suing everyone in, the, in Idaho who's named, and named Artie. I'm doomed. <laughs> he thinks he's doomed, but what does he do? Turns out he calls forth Joseph Zensi. Mm -mm. And, of course, he's expecting him to throw you know, the book at him and everything. But instead... I don't think they're hard for in any way. You see, the most widely respected expert in this field for uh, following decades of study has concluded that comic books are what? <laughs> not only are they not whole, but they seem to have a beneficial effect. They stimulate the imagination. No, no, I move to, I, I object, move to strike. You don't mean that. Oh, but I do. There was a time when I thought what you believe, but now I look at the arts. So many writers, so many artists 
are more all were motivated to create because of comic books. What is harmful is to deny humans, even young humans, their right to fantasy and imagination. Uh, and so, yeah, if there's no further question, the witness is excused. He then goes into the dream where he goes to warn him about that. But he's like, I'll protect you and your books with my life. That won't be necessary. Like, nine, nine, bibliothek and tiker. We were warned about, start and about starting your forbidden library. You were warned about starting your forbidden library again. Please. They are just books. Even Hitler <laughs> writes books. It is not those, and it is not that these are books. They are the wrong books. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. They are gone. But we are victorious. Victorious? What do you mean victorious? They burned the beginning of your new library. I once read a book about sleight of hand, mm -hmm. how a magician makes you look at the wrong thing. As Jonathan Swift wrote, there are none so blind as those who will not see. Nice! Yeah, it's still relevant. Still relevant. Of course, then he realized he, he was found not guilty and everything. And of course, he thinks, it was, I, I, how can I tell her I was in a war comic at that moment? <laughs> It's a cope. <laughs> yep. It's a cope. I don't seem to be getting a lot of respect for my brave stand. I respect you, Finster. This is a moral victory, a first step and a vital mission to save our nation. He's one of those people who just never give up, even when no one is listening. I know how he feels. Mm -hmm. I cannot allow people to go around reading whatever they want. He's holding Gru. <laughs> yeah. And sooner or later, we'll find a jury that will see things our way. Then you'll see. The scary part is, He's right about that last part, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. What does he think he's going to accomplish? The same thing I thought I was going to accomplish. Make the world a little better. I did not I did not then have the perceptive to see how comics would inspire so much creativity. Those books I sold you, they were part of my research. I had to get them out of my home. They reminded me of a crusade that now seems so silly. I wish there were some way I could make up for the damage I did. Well, I'd say you're off to a good start. Hey, there's a comic I think you'd enjoy reading. It's called Watchmen. It's really cool. <laughs> huh. Oh, there's the Bob Kane cover. Oh my gosh! And and oh, and now in this case is when we're gonna start to have some things come to a head as far as with him and Sandra. But yeah, this one we have. This is Dick's, book five. Yeah, out of six. Okay. okay. We have Dick Sprang, Jim Mooney, Joe Giella, Neil Adams, Frank Miller, and Bruce Tim all doing this book. Wow. So, yeah, he's thinking about, like, there's a big dance coming next Saturday. So, she's all like, well, I was wondering if you had any plans for the big dance at the school next Saturday. Well, I did have, I kind of have a fantasy. I was imagining myself walking with a beautiful woman on my arm. So, mm. do you have something you want to ask me? Yes, do you think Kimberly would go with me? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't understand why there are so many comic book fans. And fans. They never seem to be interested in reproducing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could not write this today. They seem to, but now they seem to have gotten a copy of Batman number one. Oh. First look of passion I've seen on his face, and it's for an old comic book. Don't touch that! Yeah. You just want to see what was so special about it. You don't open a comic book that valuable. You just stand in awe of it. There's no damage. <laughs> the guy who's there who's selling him the book, and the guy who um, authenticated it, uh, who's basically, you know, he does a price guide. Tell me, what comics do you read? Read? <laughs> Uh oh, weasel again! Uh -oh. I'm a product of my environment. He's about to give him a check when all of a sudden that's mm -hmm. it's certified. Both on the lights go out. They're trying to figure out what's happening. Um, he turns it on and it's gone. Uh oh. Now, of course, they think weasel did, did it. Are you a lot of grudge for this? Call the the police. Call the FBI. Call the Justice League of America. Tell you that he's not one of those comic book store owners that doesn't read it. Right. Someone must have slipped in while the lights were out. So, yeah, they're trying to figure out. And, of course, everyone thinks it's Weasel. And even Grudge is taking this seriously because, well, given how much he was about oh, to... yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, like, the front or back door and had opened. We would have seen the lights outside. The alleged comic book, comic book isn't in the store, and it didn't get out? Any, any chance of you refunding my money? The deal was consummated before the comic disappeared. It's your loss, Grudge. Mm. Insurance. Always meant to get some of that. Hmm. We go out of business. That's what we do. I spent every cent I had on that comic. I'm broke. I'm penniless. I'm destitute. Out of business. I'm sorry, Friendster, but about that dance Saturday, 
Where did and, and where did I get these yellow stains on my finger? Maybe I'll go talk to my old Ken doll. It listens just as well, and it's anatomically similar. Ouch! Ooh. Banana flavor. So we start singing with Batman. Uh, or Milk Master Dick. You're Bruce Wayne, of course, and you're my loyal ward, Dick Grayson. And that signals where and this, yeah, this is the Dick Spring stuff for two pages. Yeah. So, yeah, they're trying to figure out what it is, and they think it's um, Weasel. No, Robin, let's not descend to his level. If we resort to violence, we are no better than he is. Our strength is our sanity, our ability to outthink him. You're right, as usual. Now, then, this is Jim Mooney. He's so diabolical, diabolical, he sent you a clue to his next robbery. It's in a map of South America. What could it mean? So, yeah, they like, um, Gotham City Banana Museum is what it really was. <laughs> <laughs> There's a banana museum. Apparently. So he's throwing banana. meals. <laughs> they flip. Now this is um Joe Gala. As they're thinking about um it, when he like like most criminals, he started at an early age with little crimes. Catch an alarm and I'll soil my diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that kid, he stole comics. Holy doc, where's on Batman? He's gotta be stopped. The locate the computer's located his hideout. Da-da-da. Come to think of it, I'm starting to sound like what people who don't read comic books think comic books sound like. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting the Neil Adams. Ah, nice. Like in Batman, he, uh, hey, everything suddenly got all dark and sort of realistic looking. And Batman, he has a wild look in his eyes, or at least I think he does. It's hard to tell when he has the mask on. Uh, got, and got to fight him. He's got away with one and with, with from me once. Almost, but not quite. Batman, Bruce, calm down. Let's think of a plan to outsmart this clown. No, there's no time to think. He's getting away. <laughs> no, so he's seeing he's getting angrier and angrier. Oh, that was Batman in 99. Uh, NeilAdams.com. Yeah, yeah. He added a dot .com to his signature. The Batman. What did you do? And what, and what did you do with the comic book, Weasel? Talk! Like, and what I don't get is, he looks more realistic now. But when he puts it uh, on the mask, his eyes still disappear. But his eyebrows show through the mask. How does that work? <laughs> Up and we get the Frank Miller. I'm a girl. I've turned into a girl. Uh, and of course, they still have the other guy, um, you know, Jer Creed, just doing his usual stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and boom! Now we get Bruce Tim. Weasel can't have gotten far. Let's split up and circle the area. Okay, but I've got to check something first. Whew, I'm a guy again. For a moment there, I thought there was an even weirder crossover than I thought. <laughs> Ahead of its time. Ahead yep. of its time. But you take something out of there, it like, seems the comment might be in his mouth when actually he figured out what's going on. Like, empty can I keep, I, you're actually finding this actually clever. Weasley says, I keep telling you, I didn't steal the comic this time. I know you didn't. This time... To which then, you know, they're all there. I thought I'd show you my new acquisition. Detective Comics 27. Like, actually, it's cinnamon and kind of cinnamon flavor. Yeah. He, I, even, I, even I never get that hungry. This isn't a real Golden Age comic. It's some sort of edible imitation. Correct, Mr. Baker. Just like the one you sold to Mr. Grudge here. I printed it by pu and putting food coloring dyes into an inkjet printer. It's easy. Isn't it, Mr. Hotchkiss? I don't know what you're talking about. You stole, sold or stole the real copy of Batman number one that you were hired to authenticate. Then you substituted an old coverless Fox and Crow comic wrapped in the Ooh. Batman number one cover you printed with edible dyes. Once the deal was complete, you had to get rid of the fake. There was, after all, the possibility, however remote, that someone would try, someday try to read it and discover the switch. So when your, and your accomplice in the alley turned off the power, you grabbed the comic, tore off the cover, and you devoured the cover while you stashed the issue of the fox and the crow behind the rack. <sighs> Naturally, when we searched, we found no trace of the first issue of Batman. Isn't that how it was done? I have not, and not, and not, I'm not saying another word. I want an attorney. I want an attorney named Murray. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, yeah, of course, now he thinks like, like, how'd you figure it out? The banana flavored yellow stains on hand. Oh. Of course, like, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly absurd. I know it's every little detail. Well, not everything. Yeah, yeah, I've had yeah. a crush on you for months and you never know. But don't worry about it. I think it's over, Wes. 
Well, you've been reading this book for five issues now. <laughs> Why didn't you call me? Uh, late 90s fourth wall break. Oh, and Brian Bolin on the cover. That's pretty. That is. And this one we're going to have Dan Spiegel, Mike Grell, Phil Jimenez, Steve Rude, and, uh, uh, and Steve Rude with inks by Mark McKenna and Dick Giordano. Nice. But yeah, I've, been, I've had a crush on you for months and you never noticed it. How am I supposed to notice and, and to know that a woman thinks I'm attractive? It's not like that's ever happened before. Oh, well, no great loss. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. He's trying to deny it now. He's trying to, you know, convince himself yeah. it's no great loss when it really is. Denial. All right. But yeah, completely in deny denial as he's then looking back over other issues, issues um, and even shows a bit with what happened in Aquaman. Oh, no. Now, of course, he's dreaming that he's going there and everything and everyone's jealous. <laughs> Does it say? How old is he supposed to be? Um, well, in high school, of course. Okay. Okay, so his cluelessness is a bit forgivable. Yeah. But yeah, of course, we see the teacher starting to do things fine. Of course, we see him trying to ask Kimberly. She shows all the odds. Odds of Bill Gates shopping at a 99 only uh, a 99 cents only store. Odds of Howard Stern winning Nobel Peace Prize. Odds yeah. of David Duke hosting Showtime at the Apollo. Ooh. Odds of Kimberly Bell going to dance with Nerd. Ooh, the David Duke joke. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, but yeah, this is where we get um, oh, Dan wow. Spiegel doing some Western books. Nice. Yeah, really nice. Holy nice. Yeah. So, yep. Oh, in this case, they do finger gunning. <laughs> Bang! Comic fans are such nerds. They think a hot date is where the new issue of Firestorm comes out. Bang! Oh. Comic fans are such nerds. They think sharing the spirit means letting someone else read your Will Eisner comic. Oh. <laughs> That's supposed to be Hank, of course. You know, so it's probably why Kimberly goes with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it always come out the way I want it to. Or like, Finster, hold it, Sandy, that's over, remember? Life's too short to wait for some people to realize that life is too short. Aw. Ooh! Mike Grell doing some um, Warlord stuff. What? <laughs> My pencil! Huh. Huh. Again, he's still huh. trying to think about, I know. And then here's Phil Jimenez as we get some Iron Man stuff. Uh. Finster, you idiot! If I'm uh, if I'm dis and dissected, you'll have to and take me to the dance in a hefty bag. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Again, he's still constantly trying to convince himself it can work. Of course, um, you can. Uh, can you believe your fave guy wanted me to go with him? He's not my fave guy anymore. Matter of fact, I don't particularly like him anymore. Like, <laughs> what's like got to do with anything? You think I like Hank? So why do you go out with him? Because I have to go out with somebody, and he's left to the geek than most high school boys. Sounds like the basis of a perfect relationship. Oh. Now, again, she's trying to you know, convince herself, like, it's over, forget it. Now we're getting Steve Rude's artwork was here, as he lands on Paradise Island with Wonder Woman. They're, and this one's probably under the legal minimum size. I don't have to throw him back. Huh. Uh, he's, of course, he's showing how big of a crush he's had. Like, I've read some... I, I, I have every comic you've ever been in. I've even read some of them, even during all those years when it was really crummy. If that oh. doesn't prove true love, I don't know what does. Hey, isn't there some rule that no man can set foot here on Paradise Island? Yes, man. It doesn't apply to comic book readers or other guys who don't date. That's not true. I have women surrounding me night and day. Yeah, me, Supergirl, Catwoman, yes. Black Canary. Uh, of course, yeah, he's just but, checking her out. Yeah. Imagining Wonder Woman. Go in there, and I, like, I'll go up to the side and call him Queer Face. <laughs> and oh boy, this is no costume. This is the real you, Finster. You're not a superhero. You're not even a non-superhero. How do you get your own comic book? I'm not just an ordinary. I'm just an ordinary guy. An ordinary guy and a guy with oily skin. 
can't expect me to be a god. Why not? You keep expecting every woman in the world to be a goddess. This oh. cannot go on. The moral of the story. Blow to the ego. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this baby is also his self-loathing. Oh, God. No, she okay. saves him. And then I kind of understand why it's most comic books, but this one I don't get at all. God played a cruel trick on females. He fixed it so we mature faster than males, and they don't mature at all. He doesn't get it, Sam, and I guess I don't either. He can be so smart. A rare comic book was stolen, and he figured out who took it. And he can even be brave. He stood up for a principal and, and when they tried to close a comic shop. So why is he such a craven lunkhead? He's convinced that everybody thinks he's a jerk for reading comic books. Nobody thinks that. They think he's a jerk because he acts like a jerk. <laughs> Hello? Ooh. Yes? Really? Excuse me, but who is this? Okay, thank you, I think. Why should I put and why should I? After all the times I put myself out there, try to communicate with someone who was living on Earth too. I must have tried 27 times. No, not again, no more. 27, 28, what's the difference? <sighs> I know, like, basically then she wraps the lasso around him and mm -hmm. says, like, tell me your truth. The truth? The truth is I'm scared. Scared of real women. The ones in comic books are so easy to understand. You can even read their sump balloons. You don't want a flesh and blood woman. You want one made of paper. I want you, Wonder Woman. Please, I know you're not real. I know you're a fantasy. But the whole concept of a lady wanting to be with me, that's a real fantasy. Vertical Prince didn't even print stuff that weird. Finster, <laughs> you know why I kept asking Kimberly out? I knew she'd never say yes. But I could yeah. deal with that. She turns everyone down. If I'd ask out Sandy out and she said no, I'd really feel rejected. Whatever made you think I'd say no? I was trying to think of some dialogue for the new, from the new comic I'm writing. You know, it helps to read it out loud. Not such a bad life with such short notice. Did you really mean it about being afraid to ask me out? Sort of. All right, yes. Well, how about I ask if I ask you out and ask you? Of course, she thinks, oh, it's going to be too late. But nope, using the caption to do to speed it up. And I'm like, hey, that caption thing works great. Ready to go in? Could you give me a sec? I have to talk to someone. Well, I hope you enjoy my comic book. I know I have. I think I even I'm even learning which phone booth to change in. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that. Go back and read number one again. And listen, I'm not giving out comic books for women. If you think I am, you need to read the whole series again. I'm just not. I'm just going to try and uh, to try not to get my universe is quite so confused. So are you sure you want to be seen with me? Hey, we're going to get along just fine. Say, why did you come to the comic book shop this evening? Some lady called. She said you were there and you really needed me. A lady called. Uh huh. Said her name was Prince. Diana Prince. Mm -hmm. Superman saves the galaxy. Batman wipes out crime in Gotham City. But getting me a date? Now that takes a Wonder Woman. Aww. So how was that? I I mean I love this stuff. I just as it. You can't on, write it today, I, like you said. Well, people would scream it was woke, right? Yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's, it's Sergio being Sergio. It was the same humor as Mad Magazine. Exactly. Which was, which was Mark Evan. The politically incorrect publication of its Exactly. Day. Exactly. Yeah. And it just, I mean, and, and I don't, it's not like they were insulting fanboys. They weren't. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's an, an interesting snapshot because that's, I mean, 99. I was super into mm -hmm. comics in 1999 and it kind yeah. of reminds me of no it was like that back then it's it's really gotten very derivative compared yeah. to what the like, big bang was, theory depicted it yeah it was a you know what it was a an adult channeling who he was as a teenager instead of just trying to validate the stupidity of teenagers like mm -hmm. so much happens now and it was it was not trying to coddle anyone it was like look nope. here's some life advice kid like exactly don't be dumb, you know? exactly and i had to look at sandy attractive girl she's uh, equally attractive to kimberly and yet she and now she's not a comic book nerd but she knows enough to make that earth 2 referencing it's like i'm communicating yeah. with someone who's on earth 2 so she knows enough but I mean, that's how the the sort of dateless nerd was handled back then, as opposed to now, where they're made scary and dangerous and uh, like that, right? Yeah, like, 
Finster's a lovable dork, and like you said, people he thinks he people think he's a jerk because he, he reads comic books. No, because he acts like a jerk. Well, because he was going for the unattainable girl because he knew she'd say no. He was controlling the rejection, which was yeah. some wisdom right yeah. there. Some wisdom. And yeah. Where is, I mean, that's, that's a more, I think it's a more positive message mm-hmm. than, you know. He really thought he had a chance. Well, the, I'm going to say something controversial right now. Go ahead. The panels of like Batman and Catwoman so divorced from reality that they mm-hmm. actually think you can perform oral sex on a woman still wearing a costume like that. Uh, you talking- can't. It doesn't zip all the way down there, guys. Nope, I'm nope. a panel that shows you know nothing about women's clothes. Yeah, yep, they yep, tend to yep. Zip up from the back. And when they don't, they don't go down there. It would chafe when you move. It's yep. Like, and that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, like, that's the sort of thing you can you can show to a woman. And yeah, it's got sexy ladies and it's male-oriented, but that's not going to assault anyone's intelligence. No. And what do you think about the guest artists? Oh, my God. The sheer amount of talent. And that's that's another thing that was done back then, right? People would come in and do two pages in a jam. Oh yeah! They, they in fact, do it for fun. Another book I was thinking about going over, if you're willing to, is this. What is that? World's funnest. It's a um, Batmite and um, Mixius. Oh Pit- yeah. Pit- okay. They go across, and we get we get people like Mike Allrad, Brian Boland, Frank Cho, Frank Miller, Alex Ross. Oh, that one. That one. That one. Yeah, this is the one that has the famous um, Alex Ross moment of. Vixie right. and um, yeah, them what? showing up in it, but yeah, it's the same thing here. I mean, this one they did a couple more pages, or some only did one page, but still, it's the same type of jam around right. the same time, yeah. But I guarantee you that one took a lot longer and was a lot more expensive to make than that first then, one. Well, yeah, because you got Mark Amanier, and that one was Evan Dorkin, was all the other creators, and this yeah. one they only did a few pages and everything, but. Yeah, I mean, let's, 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 Gil- do, let's do that one another episode because yeah, that looks good. It does, but yeah, but um, just having such great covers and having again with Bob Kane and all, and how many of the creators are still around now? I mean, yeah. we, I know we lost. I mean, Bob Kane's gone. We lost. Yeah. Um, Jim Mooney's gone. Um, Bill Kane's not around anymore. Dick's, Dick Spring's gone, right? I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but was yeah, Kane um, and Qbert. Yeah, I mean uh, that was a labor of love. That this whole was book. this this whole book. Yeah, this exactly was a labor it, of love. It, it just showed like it was told from the point of view, but back in the day, you were allowed to sort of lovingly recognize the blind spots without it being seen as political or keep your politics out of comics. Right. right? In fact, Mark Evan Year said this is one of his favorite books to work on. He it, actually, let me look so at so sweet. Yeah. Let me, let me read what he said. Cause he actually, it's on, you gotta look, thank, thank you archives. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a short couple of paragraphs. Like, with a fanboy with a six-issue miniseries that Sergio and I did for DC. We were honored to be joined by list the whole roster of creators involved. Yeah. Would, uh, would that we had an, a, a, as an impressive of a list of readers. As with many comics I've done, sales in America were lackluster. But overseas, the thing flew off the shelf. Yeah, a but trade yeah. paperback had, at that point, recently been issued and is now available. Hint, hint. What it was was the story of a comic fan slash wannabe artist named Finster who works in a comic book shop, lusts after the wrong woman, and constantly confuses fantasy and reality. Hint, you can easily tell the difference once you realize reality is the less credible of the two. Yeah. Sergio <laughs> drew all the sequences that took place in Finster's world, while his fantasies were illustrated by guest artists, with Sergio pitching in where, and where appropriate on those pages. Lots of folks who resembled the, the, the title character said, and read it and said, Hey, I know guys who are just like that. At least one comic book show, shop owner took umbrage at the depiction of the comic shop owner mm. and refused to stock the thing. Oh, most wow. of the industry pretty much ignored it, but reaction aside, it was just about the most fun I've ever had writing a funny book. But yeah, the fact that it tanked in the States. Well, it... It kind of looks like it when you look at it. It's like, who's going to pick this off the shelf? Well, yeah, I mean, some things never change, right? 
but yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I hope we can get some people's attention by talking about this. You, I guess it was before people really followed. No, people did follow artists back then. I mean, it wasn't the big thing. It was. It wasn't. And I know. Had... It wasn't back then. Back then, unless you were Liefeld or Lee, the '90s yeah, or, artist, or you know, it was Superman because the whole death of Superman, Superman, Superman right, Blue was still was still a thing, or Batman. Yeah, like, yeah. Very unless you were the big was, names yeah. or the huge time, because it was still at the peak of image mania. Yeah, still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! What? No wait. Ninety nine. No, no. That was at the dining point of it when it was going yeah. down. Yeah, that was right when things were start. Like the bubble was starting to burst. Yeah, exactly. But... So I think we might have. I mean, nowadays people are probably kicking themselves. Like, wait, Bob Kane did a cover. Wait, you know, you have all yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays, but it just it just shows like that. Like the thing with the classic comic book thing. The reason those books are valuable is because they're rare and you know people want that history although apparently now people are buying those really expensive comics as an investment because they again appreciate again yeah. well think because that was the whole that's what started in the 90s in the first place with the speculator boom yeah but that was new ones now these are resales Oh, right. And and, and then you so, have Mar uh, Marvel and DC starting to do those where they reprint the old comics and all that. Well, no, they're gaming Marvel, especially now, trying to figure out the next character to be announced. So they buy a, a comic for, you know, maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Keeps up in value. Right. Because, you know, what do they put it in? Crypto dead. NFTs dead. Where do you put your money? Bond markets are shit. The stock market exactly. Volatile, so people are spending money on and uh, and Marvel's trying to artificially do it by trying to put a newer character so they can put the newer books that could fly off the shelves. Well, yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, books from the '80s might be worth something as opposed to having to be straight up Silver Age, some early Bronze Age books. No, I know, I get that. Valuable. Yeah, I'm talking about though, like why they're trying to put in newer characters like Riri and all that because they probably wanted to artificially, you know, induce it for current books, recent books. Well, I mean, that's a totally different challenge, right? Because let's face yeah. it, like there's interest in Riri as a character, but her stories were. Oh no, no, I would never want anyone to get that first issue. One Bender doesn't need more money just for that. Oh, those stories were rough. I mean, the early Miles Morales stories were rough. People forget they are. It took a long time. Bendis, I mean, the thing about Bendis is... Sometimes he gets lucky, like Jessica um, Jones. Credit where credit's due. Marvel would not have nearly the diversity they do. And, and DC, we're not for Bendis, right? But especially Marvel. Well, Jeff he, Johns for DC, though. Jeff yeah, Johns is a lot more. Bendis and Jeff Johns really diversified current yeah. the big two. And they had the schlep to get to let these characters have the time to catch. But except for Riri, Riri had no plan. He was told make this character, but he didn't have a yeah. plan. Unlike and um, Miles, Miles, at least he had a story of Peter's dead. Let's try and make this yeah. new one. So you had the excuse. Whereas Riri, there was no plan, no overarching. Yeah, I mean, at least La Lady Thor had a plot. Well, Lady Thor wasn't new. That idea, what? Well, oh yeah, what if? Thor, what if? You're not. Yeah, you're not supposed to know Jane Foster was Thor at the beginning of that, right? She was just Thor. But I'm, saying, I'm saying, but in general, though, that had a plot still because, like a lot of these replacements, you have a plot that is still telling. Riri had no plot, and unlike Miles, where it was in another universe, and you, yeah. you can accept killing off the main character and replacing him. You couldn't do that in the mainstream. If Riri was ultimate Iron Man or whatever, people probably would have accepted it better. I also think that it was because they did the entire slate of characters at the same time. Which, according to some editors and all that, they actually didn't know. Really? That's what that's what I've always heard. Um, John Suntress from Word Balloon, he keeps bringing it up all the time, saying how... And he finds it hard to believe. He's like, Really? You didn't know you were doing it all at once. That's not fair to the creators. You got to know if some if you're going to put somebody in the barrel that way. Exactly. And that's why but they did all new. All, they think they probably realized and decided, let's push it. Basically, I think all creators, they, all the creators came up with it at once. I mean, that's yeah. happened before, but the editors didn't think there's a problem with doing it all at once. 
Well, I guess everybody came up with the same idea at the exact same time. Well, the the people, the people. I mean, I can see quite like it would have to know. Yeah, like all new. Um, the um, uh, the the Hulk with Amadeus Cho Hulk. I could see Greg Pak coming with that naturally because he's always done stuff with Amadeus. I'd, I'd love to see Amadeus Cho in like a World War Hulk. Oh yeah, oh, he he got his own story, but yeah, but I would love. To, I'd like to see him in the um because they set up his mom. They set Is up that, his mom in yeah. um um in um um Age of Ultron. Well, oh, shit, that's right. That was his mom. That was yeah, Amadeus right. his mom, but we haven't seen anything since. I mean. We're getting to a sort of critical mass with the MCU, right? Where they're mm -hmm. using characters that don't really have, I mean. A fan base. Well, World War Hulk, not officially announced, but we all know it's coming based on the setup, is going to be radically different from the comic. Granted, so is Civil War. You mm -hmm. know, so was a lot of these stories. But they are actually getting to the point where these are new stories that aren't, you know they're coming from the comics by the skin of their teeth and so yep. these comic creators aren't going to get the paydays they did before and the question exactly. is then what happens to the industry oh and one other thing i just realized do you know another reason why you wouldn't make a comic like this today most of the creators would make mean-spirited jabs at yes. the fans yeah i mean that's what they I would look at what happened with dark crisis young justice the whole book was um fitz martin just poking fun and trying to say, oh, that 90s Young Justice, it sucked. Current books are where it's at because they're so progressive. When it's like, uh, did you actually read the books? They were pretty progressive back then, lady. But that's what makes Sergio Argoni so singular. And, and Evan Year, has, too. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have this it's light a, yeah. touch where they're self-aware. They can make fun of themselves. They can lovingly make fun of... I mean, that send-up of late 90s Batman was spot on. Yes! Right? It was so good. They had a sense of humor about it. They weren't acting like they were curious. And again, it's not mean. The world. It's like no. that Fencer is not treated like he's this self-entitled jerk. He's like, he's a doofus who doesn't yeah. realize he's being a jerk. Who do and, and at the same time, when you realize why, you realize, oh... It's understandable reason. It's not just like, I deserve to have women on my arm. It's like, no, no, no. He doesn't think he's entitled. And he, and he it's the opposite, actually. He doesn't feel he deserves a beautiful woman. That's he's, right. It's one of those things where, and now, a lot of guys were like that. Now, I do think the guys that are coming across as entitled as well are actually doing the exact same thing Finster did. They're just mm -hmm. not, you know, they're not declaring it. They're not self-aware they, either. Well, instead of, you know, asking out the girl who's going to say no, they just black pill. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it just shows how the same, the same underlying insecurities exist, the same um, desires and urges and awkwardness yes. exist, but the way they're manifesting, like, it's so much more hardcore now. And it's almost like it's because everything is under pressure mm -hmm. right no one has permission to sort of go well i'm a what do they keep what did she keep calling him a lunkhead lunkhead yeah she talked at least yeah. twice she said that yeah you're not a lot now it would be oh she's so mean she doesn't understand him she's so mean yeah and again the fact that they actually went the extra mile and have it be she's an attractive lady they didn't have it be where she's this geek girl they actually had to be oh she, and, and it showed that, that, ha that those type of girls existed even back then. I mean, nowadays, they try to have it be, oh, they, they don't go that route. Have you noticed that where they would have it be, oh, she's the normal girl compared to Kimberly's, you know, babe. Well, yeah, it's either like, you know, she's out of your, she's out of your league, Peter, or yeah, they really go normal girl, McNormal pants with McNormal glasses. Or right? even, or even. She's the opposite, not, you know, beyond, you know, underneath normal, make normal girl, but they're saying, give her a chance. It's like, uh, uh it, 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 everything's become very, very signifier mm -hmm. instead of it being, cause back then it was all them telling their own stories based on people they knew in themselves. Exactly. Right. Like this. I'm pretty sure Evan Year put a lot of himself in the fencer. Oh, I'm positive. I guarantee you. Absolutely. He put a lot of himself in a fencer. But, but nowadays, though, you said, but also notice, yes, there's a bit of a power fantasy in this. 
but it's not like a over the top power fantasy. Like he does, he's the type of guy who comes back to reality. You know, like he, like he does his power fantasy to get the mo- like his aggression, his anger, or of his annoyance, or whatever, or of his even his despair out of his system, as yeah, opposed to wanting to live in his fantasy world. Yeah, he's escaping his shitty life. You know, he's yeah. got a boss that abuses him and a school that sucks, and he has this dream to be an artist. And you know, exactly power, fa- power fantasies get a bad rap. Power fantasies is how you figure out. How you want to weird will power responsibly, right? It's it's not exactly. all just eyeball punching flying across the page. Oh yeah. I'll also say this. I just realized president. something. The bit when he became like the Hulk and Sandy yeah. calmed him down. I realized since that's his fantasy. Yeah. What is that? That tells you more about how he feels about her. Yeah. Think about that. It, it, that's dawned on me. It's like, wait a second. That's the only time you see her in any of his fantasies. Is the one when he's mad and out of control. Well, it was that that moment where he said, I, I'm not I'm not going to it's not that he wasn't aware. He was sort of blanking on it because he couldn't take the rejection. Yeah, and, I just love that. I, and I don't blame him. It'd be like uh, Kimberly. Pff, she tells everyone no. But Sandra, if she said no. Oh, God, I couldn't even live with myself. That would yeah. really make like you said, I really feel rejected. And I, I do think that's different than the stories today, because now let's face it a lot of books aimed at that crowd are the young adult rap and young adult types and it, it's sort of like how do i put this they avoid that potential for rejection that i mean he sort of stumbles oh, yeah. into it he embarrasses himself and it all works out but i don't know that that tension that recognition that you do have to take some risks and comics back then with you know peter constantly getting rejected or clark getting rejected or all that stuff it gave guys you know the awkward young men um permission to get rejected to try things and fail you were still yes even if things didn't go your way and now it just seems to be so grim darky everything is mopey awful or Uh, you win everything and you also have the also the catwoman you exactly. Know? And then you also have the other notion of it's not realistic to see Peter, a normal guy with these supermodel ladies. It's like, why not? Okay, when well, Peter's not a normal guy, he's Spider Man. He's yeah, but you know what I mean? The more relatable character. It's not relatable to have a supermodel. Tell that to all the guys who marry supermodels. What are you saying? You're saying that because seriously, there are some supermodels out there who have normal husbands. They don't have, you know, equally supermodeled um husbands. Some Almost- might, but Almost never. Yeah, because they almost some, yeah. never. Why? Well, because a lot of times never. those guys are usually the ones with the e- 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 with ego. Sometimes. Well, it's it. First of all, it's too competitive. Second that too. of all, you know, you gotta have different careers because if you're both out of work, that's a real problem. Exactly. And people who recognize how subjective and and stupid and superficial beauty is don't look for that the the reason a lot of celebrities tend to date each other is because people don't really understand what it's like to be in that world and the world's very cruel to public and on that though but you also do have a better chance of them you know getting that chemistry you know in while acting among each other a lot of times they they just that's who it's like any profession that's who you tend to meet the people yeah you know you work with that you're at social events with so, exactly. Yeah, people people count themselves out much like Finster did. People really count themselves out before they even try. One thing I going to bring up the activist. Yeah, Isn't that, that's still relevant. I mean, not as bad. It's not as bad these days. You don't have people trying to say we should get rid of comic books, but I think it's because they've kind of spread out. You don't need someone to just spout it out. I think that's kind of matched into those who try to say stuff like we don't want these high unattainable beauty standards from women. Oh, but the hunky guys are okay. I think some of that came from these type of mindset of thinking, what does this type of artwork do to people who read it? Well, yeah, there's, there's always some uh, moral panic 
going yeah. on now. Now it's sort of moved on to the Johnny Depp trial. Like that's mm -hmm. people who are getting smeared right now. You know, uh, their, their channels among, are getting demonetized. You know, oh, they're running. Their channel they're getting, they, or, or you have also people who were involved with that who are taking advantage of their popularity. Well, and they find the one complete dirt bag in the whole mm. bunch, and they cover that instead of, you know, the the middle-aged suburban lady who just yeah. sort of got interested in the trial, and it, it took off. It's the same thing. There's one, mm -hmm. you know, there's one in every generation, so two in mine, and they all have <laughs> really special occasions, you know. Um, A nice Zazu qu quote. <laughs> yeah, it, it it and that's sort of where I come at it. You know, I've been I've been in this well since the D and D moral panic. Right. Oh, that so, still comes up and down a lot. Yeah, I feel like the fucking watcher. Just I observe everything and I don't intervene. And and every you know, and I, I do think with with Sandy and sort of the role of women in this comics world, we do get ignored. Yeah. You know, when we're not getting screamed at and told we're Satan, we do get ignored and we do like this stuff legit. And mm -hmm. no guy taught us it in a lot of cases. We can't, at least I came into it myself. Right. Um, and it, it really is. I, I mean, I do think that books like this, I wish there were more of them now that were light and sweet. And I mean, you love Finster. You're rooting mm -hmm. for Finster. You right? do. And because again, they tried him. Yeah, no, he's not perfect. He's not perfect at yeah. all. Neither is Sandra. Yeah, but he's not cartoonishly awful or stupid either. He's a he's a regular guy. He's a regular guy who, like I said, he's not fugly at all. No, he's just no. he's just normal. he's a geek. He's a normal geek. Well, and he he works his butt off, right? Oh, definitely, and he works his butt off, and yet he also wants to be lazy. That's the thing. He wants that moment of like, can I get some free time, please? Well, he's a dreamer, right? He's yeah. an artist, and so I I don't know. I thought it was a really sweet story, and that's the stuff that I you know every every so often you get a like digital only Superman book or something mm -hmm. like that that has that really really affirming message. Yes, but. And yes, okay, they don't sell. I understand, but there, there's uh, gotta that's be that's a sad a way. thing. That's a sad thing. There's gotta be a way to get those books and out there, get people to give a shit. Yes, uh, or or make them even though people don't give a shit in the short term because digital comics are way cheaper, and now something mm -hmm. like this happens, and we can talk yeah. about it, right? Exactly. I mean. That's why I love this book. The fact that someone like me found this and felt like, I mean, I could have just ignored it on the shelf just like so many other people. And it's not like, uh, but I'm like, uh, look at it. I, I got it for the artwork, but I love the story. Mm. I it's got into it. It's That's the kind of stuff I like. And I'm very stoked about that Batmite Mr. Mrs. Pitlick stuff because you know I love my mashups. Yep, yep. So... And this one, is, you will love when we ever get to this because this is just so funny, so hilarious. And yeah, it's just an entire mashup of so many creators so many and i bet you got a couple of them to sign them nice see i i think that if more people knew about this stuff especially now with the mcu <laughs> leaning into comedies and doom patrol doing so well i think if more people knew that books like this exist mm -hmm. they'd they'd read them because let's face it this is not we don't want to go too much with the comedy that was the problem with thor love no. and thunder way too much comedy on that one it, it, the the problem okay have we talked about this because the thing about no no we, we can bring it up we can talk a little bit about it that was an example of a of a movie where they wanted to complete the story of jane and thor mm -hmm. and i don't think and i mean that part the, of the story i didn't in mind i did not mind the jane and thor was, part it was the best part of the movie plus the goats and storm and and, and, and and bail yeah oh yeah he was gore was gore was great Gore was yeah all of that but, but the stuff was zeus basically this is the movie where i think the marvel humor broke it it did more harm you, than good you know what that whole zeus section let's face it he just needed a lightning bolt that was it Okay, there was there was a part of that section that was for a certain demographic. It was him getting the Nate main main naked. I thought, you know, I thought that was unnecessary, but I'm not the person that was necessary for. Right. <laughs> um, I I know people who love that sequence, but let's face it, that was that. 
and the Eternals tie in uh, <sighs> and you know the setup for clearly where they you know where for Hercules the yeah the the whole yeah um okay it's like, it's like you just Crow was bad uh, yeah <laughs> he, he was, was not that was not Zeus at all from the comics from the comics he is not that type of guy he is like a big full red beard like yes i am amazing i just think they underestimated the emotional int intelligence of the audience yes. and i do think that shows that the people making this stuff are scared of the Take loudest risk. well but they're scared of the loudest of the people out there who just hate everything that isn't bathos Right. Uh, um, it, it sort of like James Gunn is becoming the watchman of comic book movies. He's the only one that seems to be able to. Yeah, he knows to take these obscure characters. Now, there, now there are times where he does some things that are don't fit the characters at agreed. all. Yeah, yeah. There's like what he did with Drax was good, but it's not the it's not Drax, oh, he, for example. He, well, he completely changed Ratcatcher too, right? Oh, right. Well, no, but sometimes it works. Sometimes it yeah, works, he, like with Ratcatcher. Well, Polka Dot Man was very Polka Dot Man. That's your mom. <laughs> I love I that. Love that. <laughs> I yeah. love that too. But and yet he still nailed some of the characters, like um, um Bloodsport. Yeah, but nailed him. Blood, like patting the rat. Timothy, Adam, like that, that is see james gunn doesn't underestimate and he's getting even better at it he doesn't under no, peacemaker but yeah he doesn't underestimate the emotional maturity of the audience he is trying to reach and i think that was the and, and maybe it just there were too many cooks and they had to serve too many people because the thing about the thor movies they review terribly, and they are extremely profitable. I still say Ragnarok was the best one of them because it had a good balance of humor and serious tone of being Thor. The first Thor movie is still my favorite. Well, yeah, that's the best one. But second Ragnarok one is still my second. Least. Yeah, second, yeah but Ragnarok is the second one. I, I will still like... say Love and Thunder. I still put above Dark World. Dark World. Oh, just, uh, agreed. Dark World is still my bottom of comic book movies. Period, because you could so tell one it derailed. If they had, they put too much on Loki. They uh, there was like such great potential for the villain that he became such a footnote in the movie. Like, and the, it was boring. The pacing was way off. So I will say, I think part of the problem with Love and Thunder is Loki wasn't there. You yeah. did miss that. You missed that because he's what made it work. A lot of the comedy came from him and all that. And it just felt like, now that the, what was the point of the guard, like putting them off with the guardians if they were going to just send them off? You know, he was going to leave? Well, okay, let's face it. One, they wanted to backdoor some guardian stuff. Two, they needed a sequence that they could shoot early and do all the digital for for the trailer. That right. to me was the entire purpose of the guardians. True. That whole sequence was just, we need to get a trailer out. We need to do the CGI. Let's get this shot done and worked on. Because it has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Yeah. And we need to explain. Yeah. And, and we need to get rid of the dad bod. Yeah. You have to explain kind of what happened there. But it, I mean, that's the thing. These, these things are such massive lifts and they pump them out fairly fast. For yep. what they do. And I, I just think, I don't Love and Thunder, I think, at the end of the day, was a really heartfelt romance wrapped in a whole bunch of cynicism because they were afraid to tell a heartfelt romance because they think that men don't want to see that. And I, I, are I'm you hopeless romantic. You know, if, if you look at what all the guys are saying about Marvel Comics, that's exactly what the guys want. They Well, want some of them. I will say some of those entitled ones, I don't I, Here's where I look at it. And this is where I look at some of the problems when they say, when I see people say that they don't want romance in their books or their movies. Here's what I think they really want. They don't, they want the romance to be there, but that type of stuff, because they're not looking for it, it goes over their heads and they don't register it. They don't want bad romance that registers in their mind and they're like, I don't want that in this thing because it makes them think and recognize it. Because they say, oh, there was never romance in that stuff. There's romance in a lot of with a lot of stuff. 
but Stan it's not. Stan, but it's Stan Lee created the romance was central to. Right, it. but I'm talking about also on movies and all that stuff. Where they say, "Oh, the ro-, like we don't care who the characters fucking." It's like well, that, that's the thing. It's not about the fucking. It's no, about I know the relationship. Oh, but, and I, I think that. that but you get what I'm saying, right? It's like no, they. I, I, to- think, I totally get what you're saying. I think it, that's their problem, right? I and I think they're. Part of the problem with the dialogue between the comic book companies and and the fan base now is they're speaking two completely different languages and the comic book companies are so I you, you talk to some of the people in that orbit and they're so shell shocked by the screaming online they don't know how to read the coded language of people exactly that don't say what they they're saying what they think they mean, but it's not what they mean. I mean, oh, the whole I've incel seen, thing of they just yeah. really want a hug. I, right? I mean, it's, I've seen comic pipe, kind of like parts. You did a video recently where he's actually talked with some of the comic pros and editors, and they're like, why are these people, we're trying to give them what they want. Why are they still hating it? Like, And it's like, because they're looking at some of these channels who, yes. And here's why I say the problem is, these channels are starting to become 24-7, like 90% negative, maybe 10% positive. Well, no one's going to pay good. attention to anything. Even if they make good points in those videos, they're not going to watch it because they're like, if they're complaining so much, clearly it's on them because they're not well, that, doing that's any the good. YouTube algorithm, right? That's, yeah. that's the YouTube algorithm. That's what it rewards, and nobody can do anything about that. And that's yeah. why I think Disney Plus is really going to um, – help things long term even though it's a bumpy road right now because they're not beholden to the youtube algorithm that's true but you still have creators though who would want to follow some of the people like look at she hulk let's be honest they've actually been more coming out saying yeah they were trying to go at the trolls and all that's like you shouldn't shouldn't, see that's the thing why shouldn't you go at the trolls oh no I get that, but you shouldn't base a lot of the narrative around the trolls. I'd say do some jabs here, but don't base like a huge part of the narrative and then have that narrative not matter at the end. Yeah, I I understand. Like I understand being psyched out, right? As, yeah. as somebody who draws a lot of fire, I really, I do think that people need to be more honest and open about the psychological impact of really vicious trolling and people like, yeah. oh, that just feeds them. I I don't agree. I think that we do have to recognize that even trolls are human beings. Mm-hmm. And I think which that again, that's say what you will have about about him. He's not a troll. Right? He's not one of those type of guys. Again, okay, he's more let, like me. You know, let let's face it. The uh, that one media guy. I mean, he's yeah. basically a troll, right? He's a troll oh yeah. Send video. his own nephew to buy a comic book, doesn't he? So he can have yeah. the guy arrested. I'm like, yeah. And and no. people used to do that, right? People yeah, that they did that for thing. porn. Was porn? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And and you know things like Mad Magazine. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a real because everybody's everybody's seeing the worst in everything instead of trying to understand the uh, the the pain behind the rage and the only yes. reason I kind of decipher it is because I worked in music programming mm-hmm. during you know the late 90s and early 2000s when you have no idea how savage teen girl boy band fans are. Oh, I know, I know. You, we've, you, we've talked about this on other streams before so yeah, vicious vicious just as bad right I mean mm-hmm. look, at, look at Taylor Swift fans oh, and, I get it um, I get it but I trust me I know, but that's yeah. like I, I said, though. I, I, I just, do think that, yeah, not everything they're doing is programming to the haters. I do no, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I just think she is one of the more blatant examples of it. But how is that any different than, you know, Rick and Morty with the whole, you know, incest thing and them getting I think, married and all? That's trolling. I think when they do that, because they morning. sometimes put it into an episode. They don't do the whole season on it or whatever i think there's the difference there see and this is where i think there's a bit of a lack of understanding that trolling exists outside of fandom yes because i did see that as hating on nerds because if you look at some of the screen names in that really nasty chat Mm -hmm. when he's going to court with titania Mm -hmm. they're female screen names that's a good point. They're feminine coded screen names. And if I, don't, I don't think the writers were going for that when they did that. 
I do think there's something because you got to remember these people don't live in this world all the time, mm -hmm. right? They're looking at the nastiness of women in the public eye in general. Right? Yes. And it's not it's not just Star Wars. It's, you know, Camille Vasquez and the Johnny Depp trial. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, oh, God, AOC. There was a yep. lot. Oh, um, yeah, I remember. I, I remember what people say about AOC. So the idea that they're hitting at nerds, I don't mm -hmm. think that's true. They were hitting at trolls. and the Which I keep saying, which I keep saying that. I keep telling people, so what, yeah. are you guys trying to say that all um, fans are haters? No. Well, and if you saw fandom behavior in that show, what does that say about fandom behavior? Exactly. It's like what Jeff Johns did with Superboy Prime. Remember, think about this. When he first did it, Superboy was Prime saying, you're ruining it. Everything was better on my earth. Everything was better. And back then, people didn't thought no oh, comp fans were like that because you didn't hear them that often. Nowadays, I look back, I'm like, oh my God, Jeff Johns was at the head of the curb way too early. He was doing it way, he probably knew they existed, but they weren't as vocal and in a public eye as much as they are now. So he was taking pot shots at people that no one knew existed until now. But I mean, if you look at the treatment of, say, somebody like Demi Lovato, mm -hmm. for instance, that has nothing to do with fandom. And that was savage. Yeah. Right? I mean, the shit Taylor Swift takes, okay. She encourages some of it, but mm -hmm. still, right, the nastiness that gets flung at any woman in the public eye, and like I said, not just actors, not just musicians, but anybody who gets a profile. So, like, you know, um, I keep going back to Johnny Depp's lawyer because she happens to be attractive yep. in a high-profile position. Like, people were just horrible. Wait, people, kept thinking, people kept thinking, oh, the two dating? <laughs> Yeah, that was really disgusting to me, quite frankly. Yeah. We're basically accusing her of breaching professional ethics, right? But it was also, they took really, you know, it's all believe women, women are victims, you know, and nastiness to the female. Right. Doing her job, right? Everybody deserves a defense. Exactly. And it, it, it the, as much as people feel stung by things they feel are reflected you gotta see the other side that there's a lot of messages that people who are stung by that don't mm -hmm. see and that stinks i mean the things that have sort of hit me um and made me feel like absolute dog shit over the years nobody cared you know mm -hmm. oh, it's always thicker skin and i think that is honestly why people were not sympathetic to mm -hmm. the people that were stung by She-Hulk because they weren't sympathetic when exactly. other people were saying, this isn't going, they're like, well, you should be better. Why? That okay, is that, yeah, that, that's one thing that I can't stand. I cannot answer. stand that. Yeah. That's why I keep saying why I'm in the middle and I call up both sides. I feel both sides have reached oh, peak insanity in every regard, politics, media, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. They have yeah. reached peak insanity, which I'm just like, this is going to collapse eventually. Well, people are checking out. There is a lot. Yeah. I mean, people, the only thing that can bring people into the movies now is, you know, Marvel films, Top Gun, and possibly Avatar 2. Possibly, but we'll have to see. Okay, if that doesn't do it, then we're going to know that things are... Well, and for, for people crapping all over Marvel... It gets butts in seats, and it's pretty much the only thing that does consistently. I will say this, and I'm gonna wrap, we're going to wrap up with this. I just want to say, though, but I will acknowledge, I do think there is a bias against DC because it's not Marvel. And yes, they've had some stinkers, but I do think there are some creative and people, and when you see some of them, they keep just praising Marvel for things that are, that they then criticize DC over for the same thing. It's like... Like what? Well, I'm just saying some of the, some of the, like they they would say such great casting or great great humor in Thor: Love and Thunder, but the humor in Black Adam stunk. It's like, wait, what? There was more bad jokes in Love and Thunder than there were in Black Adam. What are I you talking were, about? I think there were just more jokes in general in Love and Thunder. So the ones that didn't land didn't land, but then the next one came along. True, but I'm just saying. Oh, and that, from my also, I've heard a lot of that comes from how. 
the premieres are done where they do treat the review people much better. Marvel Disney oh, yeah. goes out of their way to treat them better than Warner Brothers does. I, and unfortunately, that probably puts them in a bad mindset. Black Adam was not terrible. I think Black Adam suffered from the general bad vibes surrounding Warner and notably Walter Hamada. You know, True. Um, Ray Fisher got treated quite badly well, I'm, I'm not going to talk about fisher with how he treated jeff john sorry well sorry. yeah i mean that that's an example of a guy who's traumatized and lashed out at the wrong people sometimes right? but he's I'm unfortunately thinking, though he thinks he's lashing out at the right person that's the unfortunate thing that's trauma right yep and and i mean with that and the whole amber heard thing and the whole so much stuff rid of batgirl and all the cancellations i think that Black might be Adam. why james gum is might do a full re hard reboot i think i think he's looking at the stuff that's coming down the pipe and recognizing that the scripts are not there and that's always been the weakness on dc feature films the scripts mm -hmm. It's not the casting. It's not the. It's not the visual effects. It's not the look. It's the scripts. The script, and in that case, that was an old script. Let's be honest. Black Adam was a fifteen-year-old script that had very few tweaks aside from removing and replacing characters. Oh, it's it. You could see the portions that were rewritten. Oh yeah. It, it was really. Cyclone crazy. was supposed to be Star Girl. See, that was the thing. Okay, you're you're going against an ancient power, so you get two people on the team who are totally now, rookies. Um, and, and, um, um, Adam, or whatever, he made sense because he has such a connection in the comics to Black Adam. That made sense. You needed to get that ball rolling. Yeah, I mean, Cyclone actually ended up winning me over by the end. Oh, I by the end. But to know that she was supposed to be thing. Stargirl explains a lot. But I think the worst hackery was hawkman i mean they just even though he, he, he acted no good reason. the actor was great but that mansion with the underground lair in it was, it was so x-men it was so x-men it's louisiana that thing would flood yeah like that was i was like that's not any that's not any origin of hawkman and hawkman's had like what four different origins Exactly, exactly. That, anyway, was, anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be yeah, rambling yeah, more. Three hours. Yeah, we could just go. Yep. So, and thank you for coming on with me, Leon. Except, boy, we do it for about half of it. It's going over the comic, and the other half is just rambling, but that's what yeah. we do. And thank you for not torturing me with Grim Dark Batman this time. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I had no interest in going back to that. I'm just like. I know it's, I know it's funny to watch me chew off my own arm, but that was truly <laughs> enjoyable. I really liked it. It was. I knew it was. And I know you're going to love World's Funnest when we get to it. They even I'm poke fun. I'll just say this. They even poke fun at Grim Dark Batman. Yeah, I'm, and I'm poor Batmite. I'll just say this. Poor Batmite. He doesn't take it very well. I love Batmite. I love Batmite so all right, well, I have a Batmite party around here. So I love Batmite. <laughs> right. Well, we'll see you all in the next one, guys.